All right. Um, let's go into this uh, proposal that uh, Bernie Sanders um, unveiled, which um, is, I mean, both just, I think, great policy, but it's also going to be interesting politics um, in which I think we will see more of. Like I said earlier, uh, the debate on September 12th, it's going to be on Thursday, December, tw uh, September 12th. There's only 10 people in it only. And, uh, but there's just going to be one debate. So, um, I don't have it right in front of me as to who made it, but you can imagine who did and, uh, who didn't, um, Castro will be there. Um, obviously, Warren Sanders and Biden, Klobuchar, uh, Yang, you will have Booker and Harris and Beto O'Rourke Buttigieg. and Buttigieg. And am I missing one? Maybe I'm missing one, but no Delaney, no those other people, no uh, Gabbard. Um, and... So I think, you know, to a certain extent, this is um, we need to start having more of these smaller debates, I think, um, because it's really the only way. I mean, the Democrats need to examine their candidates. And the only way that you can do that is uh, is is, to, you know, 25 people. It's very difficult to do. Um, but uh, so here it is, the uh, proposal that Sanders um is well here let's play this um uh, this is his introduction uh he teased this i guess this is a couple of days ago and then more details are starting to trickle out in another piece of legislation that we're going to be offering we will eliminate medical debt in this country i mean i just stop and think for a second why should people be placed in financial duress for what crime did you commit you had a serious illness all right that is not what this country should be about. Um, we still have something like 50% of all personal bankruptcies are either in a large part or a significant part due to medical expenses. That's just, that's just unbelievable. And you, you can imagine that the stress of being in bankruptcy is also not going to help you get better physically. Um, you can also imagine that having physical uh, and medical um, ailments are going to make it that hard, much harder for you to get out of bankruptcy. So uh, under uh, Sanders' plan, the government would negotiate and pay off past due medical bills that have been reported to credit agencies. It would repeal some elements, and this is an important part. Now, this is all told, they think it is going to end up canceling about $81 billion in existing past due medical debt. So if you're, if you're current with your medical debt, it will not pay it off. Now, that dynamic is a little bit tricky. Frankly, sort of a similar dynamic we saw with HAMP, although they didn't, um, that was the uh, home mortgage adjustment program. There was um, there was a lot of other problems with that. But for now, this is, I think, a good first step. What we really need to do is get to a place where you cannot create debt by having a medical problem. It would also repeal some elements of the 2005 bankruptcy reform bill and allow other existing and future medical debt to be discharged. Uh, the 2005 bankruptcy reform bill made it difficult to discharge this debt. In other words, in bankruptcy, you get protection from your creditors. And in some instances, you can just jettison that debt. But the 2005 bankruptcy bill imposed strict, strict means tests and eliminated fundamental consumer protections for Americans. I mean, that bankruptcy bill is a disaster. And it's caused so much harm. And for so many people. It is also, frankly, another function of inequality in this country. Donald Trump, perfect example of somebody who used bankruptcy laws uh, multiple times. There's no means testing 
when you go to bankruptcy as a uh, corporation. And of course, you're at arm's length anyways from your own uh, assets. Only people unable to pay their medical debt would be granted relief. Those keeping up with their payments would have to continue to pay. The proposal would also create a new legal framework to ensure that no credit scores are negatively affected upon unpaid medical bills. Uh, so that's a big part of this as well. Um, I mean, that's pretty exciting stuff. More stuff will come out. But $81 billion to get rid of the medical debt of people who are in financial distress. Were you aware that our um, defense budget went up by $100 billion last year? Yes. Did that materially affect you? So the idea that we couldn't afford to do this is just ridiculous. We could do this without batting an eye. If it wasn't reported, no one would, no one would know except for all of those um, millions of people who are suffering under medical debt. I mean, it's, it's a no-brainer. Um, and it's going to be interesting because Joe Biden was one of the main proponents of that um, 2005 bankruptcy bill. And just to give you a sense of what's going on with the Washington Post, this is sort of like a sidebar. I don't know it's a sidebar. I think their uh, they're incredible dishonesty, this cycle. There, is, there's I mean, something very bizarre with well, going on with the Post. Well, it's ideological, but it's also a bizarre personal hatred of Bernie Sanders. I mean, look... I don't know what motivates it, but it's real. The dynamic is real. And, you know, this came up in the context of, of apparently, you know, like uh, I think we mentioned this last week that uh, Nir Tandon, you know, accused me of doxing somebody because I retweeted a, um, a clip from an unnamed LinkedIn account for, of a an anon, I guess a, an anonymous tweeter who was featured on MSNBC news um, making the case that Bernie Sanders in some way was um, you know engaging in conspiracy theory about about the, the Washington Post I mean, so all weird stuff but here is so the Washington Post did a fact check on Bernie Sanders' claim that 500,000 Americans are bankrupted by medical bills each year. And it gave him three Pinocchio-level liar, I guess out of four, for saying this. Sanders based his statement on research, and this is actually written by one of the researchers, <laughs> that we and three colleagues published in the American Journal of Public Health this guy named Warren uh, Gunnels. Uh, I'm sorry. Is it, no, it's, I'm sorry. Right. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. And here is the author of the study. Um, in our 2019 research, 37% of bankrupts very much agreed that medical bills were an important factor, while another 21.5% somewhat agreed. Many others cited lost wages due to illness. Overall, two-thirds cited illness-related bills, incomes, loss, or both. That's equivalent to 530,000 medical bankruptcies annual, annually. But even the 530,000 figure is an under underestimate uh, of the number of people affected by medical bankruptcies. Most bankruptcies involve more than one person and average about 2.7 people, often including a spouse, partner, and child. That means that the 750,000 bankruptcies last year involved more than 2 million people. Somehow, the Washington Post um, came up with three Pinocchios. According to uh, this researcher, um, the, the claim that the Post um, relied on rests on an eco-econometric study that found only a modest uptick in bankruptcy filings among persons hospitalized in California between 2003 and 2007. <laughs> But that study appeared tailor-made to undercount medical bankruptcies. 
And, and who funded as that we, study, I wonder? Yeah, as we and Elizabeth Warren noted in our response to it, in the New England Journal of Medicine, it excluded most people who were frequently hospitalized, a group that's at high risk of medical bankruptcy. It assumed that anyone not hospitalized could not suffer medical bankruptcy, even though people who aren't hospitalized in the course of a year account for four-fifths of out-of-all-pocket medical bills, that no one is bankrupt by bills for child's or partner's care, and that potentially bankrupting illnesses never start before the moment of hospitalization, an assumption contradicted by the study's own data. Um, so... Yeah, this is by David Himmelstein, Steffi Woodhandler, distinguished professors of public health at the City University of New York. So um, there's something very strange going on at the Washington Post, and I don't I don't know what accounts for it, but it's real. Well, I mean, there was the one that uh, several weeks ago with the multiple jobs, uh, people having to work multiple jobs to earn a living, where essentially the guy was like. Well, it is literally millions of people, but that's not really that many. I mean, you know, I, I think they're showing the ball in a lot of things. Include, I mean, and then you look at the Nate Silver phenomenon where, you know, his whole brand is built on being supposedly an objective arbiter of numbers. And he's just fixated on Sanders on Twitter. It's very strange. I, I mean, never trust people who say they're not ideological, period, is definitely something that I would pretty strongly assert. And I think that... We're going to need to upgrade fact checking. Fact checking is yeah. is going to need to Glenn be a Kessler very different thing because these people are useless at best. Well, let's let's actually do we have that clip of um, Jordan Peterson calling for a uh, debate? Uh, yeah. um, this is a good example of something to not fact check. Right. We'll get to that in a moment. But uh, here you have millions of Americans are forced to work two to three jobs just to survive, said Bernie Sanders. The Bureau of Labor Statistics shows that nearly eight million people hold more than one job, but most of those extra jobs are part time, not full time. It's like if you're how could you work? How could you work two full time two full time jobs? That's the metric. So the next line is Look at the, the next and the millions going. that's in in quotation <laughs> of people amount to just five percent of Americans with jobs. So that millions. means that ninety five percent of workers are not working two or three jobs to survive, making this a misleading statement. And the statement again. Read the statement. Millions of Americans are forced to work two or three but not tens of millions like he didn't say. I, right. Or a majority of Americans or most Americans. Right. I I love that it's like there's all these different ways you could shift it for it to not work, but well, there's gave been... you the one exact framing where it's like, yep, five millions would be a formulation of millions. And yeah, there you go. There's been Democrats that have been a little bit, um, uh, you know, um, cavalier with the way they cite that and this make it seem like maybe 25 percent of people or something like right. that. But bring no, he said millions. millions. Yeah. Well, it's also great, too, that it's like, yeah, it's just five million people that well, have to, like, drive an Uber 20 hours a week in addition to working a full time job in order to survive. Yeah. Who All cares? Right. Look, this is important to talk about.